American astronaut Scott Kelly not only set a record for the longest single space flight in history, he also raised new questions about how human DNA reacts to space travel. According to NASA, 7% of his genes are temporarily different than those of his identical twin brother, Mark Kelly, who is also a NASA astronaut, but who remained on Earth. While the two are still identical brothers, researchers say that the way Kelly's DNA responded to his environment changed while he was in space. So with more insight into the science behind this space oddity, Derek Pitts is the chief astronomer and planetarium director at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Joining us now, thank you so much for joining us. This seems super weird. Right, but let's use science to yeah, like, figure out what's going on here. Yeah, we think of our DNA as something that's set in stone, but walk us through just how this is even possible and what it really means. Okay, well actually it's not that complicated. Hmm. It's just the way in which it was explained made it seem a little bit more odd than normal. So it goes like this. So your DNA that's in your body uh, is the makeup of who you are and what you look like and all the characteristics about you. And typically when you talk about twins, you say that their, D their DNA is exactly the same. Well, as it turns out, DNA in everybody can have slight mutations. And these mutations are caused by things in your environment. The DNA itself isn't different, but there are just slight changes in it. And in this particular instance, there's one other piece that goes along with it. And it's that the genes connected to your DNA, they have a, a certain kind of behavior called expression. And expression means how the DNA and how the genes themselves actually relate or interact with your environment. So if your environment changes slightly, the way in which the genes are expressed from the DNA, the way in which they interact with your environment, that changes. So what happened with Scott was that when he went into space, his environment changed. And because his environment changed, all of his genes, almost all of his genes, had a different way of expressing themselves because of the environment. Now, here's where the, here's where the, uh, the real change comes in. When he came back to Earth, 93% of those genes that changed their expression reverted back to way they would normally, the way they would normally express themselves in an Earth environment. 7% of those did not change back right away. Now, what's going to happen with that? This is a great way for NASA to identify which things really affect the human body in space. So, so, so Derek, this is not, so if I understand the science correctly, uh, you can go to the gym, I can go to the gym, work out on the guns, work out on my delts, and my expression can change. Well, you know, actually, we can make it even simpler than that. Let's just take twins, and we can have a twin on the west coast and a twin on the east coast, and what will happen is that those twins will react differently to their environments, so the way their genes are expressed will be different. So you said that you know 7% of his genes did not revert, but he was in space for a while, it was like a year. Is there a possibility that maybe a year down here on Earth will have 100% of his genes revert? Oh yeah, that's totally possible. And this, this is the whole point of the experiment, is that you know, if we, if we think we're going to do anything with long duration space flight or human exploration of the solar system, we really have to understand how the body is going to react to the space environment. And right now, the longest record, continuous record we have in which we have an experiment subject and a control subject like Scott and his identical twin brother Mark, well, that's 340 days. Now, we can go to the moon takes three days to get there. We can take a nice long weekend, have a good time, and not really have to worry so much about the effects of being in space because we aren't out there very long, even though our genes will express themselves differently even in that short trip. But, you know, it takes at least six months to get to Mars, at least. And if you want to spend any more than a couple of weeks there after you've spent six months in space, then it's going to take a number of years for you to actually wait until the Earth and the Mars come together again in close approach and make a return. So now we're talking about trips that are three years in space, four years, and we do not yet clearly understand how the space environment fully affects the human body. And of those changes, how do we mitigate them 
And can we see a correction if we come back to a normal Earth environment? So man has been going into outer space for a, quite a long time. Uh, why do you think the news around this was so sort of explosive? I mean, everybody was talking about it. Is it because they weren't testing astronauts like Neil Armstrong and others that sort of the, the early astronauts that were going up into this into the, into space like Alan Shepard and those guys? Well, those missions were about different things, actually, in a sense. When we look back at those missions, those missions were about a particular kind of achievement, and that is establishing America's dominance in space by achieving the goal of putting men on the moon and returning them safely. Returning them safely meant that they weren't killed. We weren't really interested so much. I mean, we sort of were, but not so much interested in the subtleties of mm. being in space for, long, for a long time. So now the reason why we're interested in, in this is because it's normal. It's normal now for astronauts to spend six months on International Space Station. And that's been going on for the duration of the life of Space Station, which is about 10 years. So that's become sort of regular and understandable. But now we have two things going on. One is, this is the first time we've had twins as astronauts. And that presents this really wonderful opportunity to study the differences in DNA and gene expression between two, quote unquote, identical uh, subjects. So that's cool. And then the second thing is, again, if we think we're gonna make these long-term trips into space, we really need to better understand what's going on. So now we're looking at a different goal. So let's say, for, for example, that we discovered that humans actually can't can't really survive safely because of the way the genes express themselves after 600 days in space, okay, almost two years in space. What that would mean would be that we would have to abandon the idea of the human exploration of the, the solar system because everything else is more than 600 days away. So that would make a major change in how we think about exploring the solar system, exploring space, and really a change in our understanding about who we are and what we can do as explorers. So that's why this becomes exciting. And, and of course, who doesn't like to study twins? Everybody loves to study <laughs> twins. It's really true. fascinating stuff. Derek Pitts, always great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.